Good morning. Good morning. Oh, we're really loud this morning. Okay. All right. Better. Thank you. Uh, well, welcome to all visitors and guests. We're pleased that you're worshiping with us today. Uh, we pray that the joy of Christ will fill you uh, during worship. Uh, there are friendship pads at the end of each pew. Um, if you would fill those out, send them down and back again, it's greatly appreciated. And then join us uh, downstairs after the service for uh, coffee and fellowship. Well, today's KDIO radio broadcast is sponsored by Kurt and Penny Horman in memory of Peggy Paulson and in honor of Shirley Horman and Emily Sigler. And then for all the mothers and mothers in heart, uh, happy Mother's Day. Uh, for all the women on Mother's Day, whether you are a mother, a mother at heart, trying to be a mother, or having a difficult day, uh, please accept a carnation on behalf of the Evangelism Board as you leave to service today. And then we have happy birthday wishes to uh, Connie Newman, I'm trying to, there he is, uh, who turns 82 on the 17th. Uh, the last day of Sunday school is next Sunday. There will be games and an ice cream Sunday bar, and there is no Sunday school today. Uh, please see your bulletin about Congregational uh, Twins game outing, confirmation schedule, which has changed, a synod assembly, which is coming in two weeks, and other um, community events. And then thanks today to our lector, Terry Kahlberg. And is Christy here? All right. Uh, Christy is going to be stepping down um, as the temporary coordinator of the um, coffee volunteers at the end of June. Uh, so we're seeking someone to serve as that coordinator. So please contact Christy or the church office for details about that if you feel um, led to serve our congregation in this role. Uh, we might uh, may need to suspend coffee and snacks during the summer if we don't have someone to assume this role. Um, so you're welcome to bring in your own coffee or other beverage to drink during the church service if it's in a container with a lid to avoid spills. All right, is there anything else that should be lifted up this morning? All right, please stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share Christ's peace with those around you. We continue with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, and we'll take a moment for silent self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And here's the good news. 
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we sing, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We sing, This is the Feast.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading can be found beginning on page 105 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. In Athens, Paul faces the challenge of proclaiming the gospel to Greeks who know nothing of either Jewish or Christian tradition. He proclaims that the unknown God whom they worship is the true Lord of heaven and earth who will judge the world with justice through Jesus whom God has raised from the dead. Reading from Acts the 17th chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown. This I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, even as some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold, silver, or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Psalm 66 is found in the red ELW hymnal between the readings and the hymns and also at the screens at the front of the church, and we will read responsibly by verse. Reading from the Psalms, the 66th chapter, beginning with the 8th verse. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings and smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I call out to God with my mouth and praise the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and is tended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. The word of the Lord. 
The second reading can be found on page 183 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. The author of 1 Peter encourages Christians to remain faithful, even in the face of defamation and persecution. In baptism, we are made clean to act in accordance with what is right. A reading from 1 Peter, the third chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in, that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. I invite the children to come up for a children's message. We'll sit up here today. Well, thanks for coming up. So good morning. Good morning. Do you know what day it is today? It is Mother's Day. Well, so today we celebrate our moms and thank them for all that they do for us. You know, I was talking to your moms and I asked them to share with me what they do for all of you. Your moms do a lot. Your moms go to work, they do chores, they go to the grocery store, they keep track of what's going on and where things are. They plan things, they clean up things, they study, they learn, they teach. Well, moms do a lot of different things. But what? Good, good. But one thing that all moms told me is that she prays for you. You. So your mom prays that no matter what happens, whether it's good or sad or scary, that that God will be with you and keep you strong and feeling loved. So your moms do a lot of things, but that one is one of the most important, that she prays for her children. So in our Bible readings today, we learn that God is the God of the living, so we're all living in God's love. Not because we do great things, but because God loves us just because God likes to love us. Um, and that's what God does every day. So moms are following Jesus' example when they pray for you and following God's example by loving us. So did you know that you could pray for your mom every day? Did you know that? Yeah. Yes. Good. Well, we're going to pray right now. So can you repeat after me? Dear Lord, Thank you for my mom. Thank you for my mom. Be, with Be with her and keep her strong. 
let her know that you love her. And that I do too. Amen. Amen. All right, should we make the sign of the cross? God in my head, God in my heart, God on my left, and God on my right. All right, thank you. You can go back to your seat. Uh, well, today's special music is uh, Jonathan and Carol Itzi, The Gift of Love. Thank you. Well, please stand as we welcome the gospel by singing Alleluia. gospel this morning is found in St. John chapter 14 beginning with verse 15. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is speaking. If you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. Mm-hmm. 
Well, grace and peace, beloved, from the resurrected one, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, when purchasing auto insurance, many people want the full coverage option, but there really is no such thing. Uh, There are different policies that cover different things, such as liability, comprehensive, collision, medical, uninsured, and rental insurance policies. So trying to achieve full coverage involves many different policies. Well, the Athenians were doing their best to have full coverage from their gods. Each god had special powers and attributes. So the city was filled with statues, temples, and altars just to keep their daily lives in order. If you needed protection, you went to that god statue and offered a sacrifice. If you were thankful for a healing, then you went to another god and gave a sacrifice out of gratitude. Well, if you received a blessing that you didn't know which god it came from or had a special prayer request that wasn't covered by the array of gods already on display, never fear, there was an altar to the unknown god. Well, Paul had the answer to the identity of the unknown god of the Athenians. Paul boldly claimed this unknown god was the one who made all things and was Lord of heaven and earth. Well, Paul began by sharing the good news of Jesus' resurrection to his fellow Jews and the God-fearers in the synagogues. He then took his message to the Agora, the open public civic center. It is here he met some of the Greek philosophers that were more than happy to hear, have something new to debate. Think of it as the daily morning coffee gathering place. While well, Paul was pleased to be invited to the Areopagus, or Mars Hill, uh, to present his case. It was a center of learning, a 24-hour news source, if you will. Paul climbed the stone hill to the platform with the impressive and intimidating Acropolis towering above them. Um, These pictures, the Mars Hill, um, I was there five years ago for a uh, In Search of Paul uh, community or continuing education, and that is the um, Acropolis right next to it, right below it. So it is right there overlooking the city. Well, a note about the Acropolis. It is built on one of the eight hills of Athens in the 5th century BC, um, having the dual purpose of fortress and religious center. So inside the walls is the world-famous Pantheon, including the Temple of Athena Nike, the patron and protectress of Athens and other Greek cities. Her importance cannot be understated, as she was the goddess of wisdom, handicraft, and warfare. So her sculpture and ethos dominated the landscape. While Paul used the rhetorical steps of Logos in his speech, of reason, expression, wisdom, credibility, and persuasion in this city that's uh, steeped in philosophical discourse. This Aristotelian form of speech was expected by the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers that were listening to Paul. Well, Paul's intent to persuade the Athenians wasn't because he was bothered by all the false gods or offended by those altars in the city. It was because their false and empty ideas were stealing life from them and leading them astray. Well, it was easy for the Athenians then and easy for us today to make idols. Heidi Highland Mann imagines Paul would say something similar to in a speech to us. Americans... I see how extremely religious you are in every way. Then perhaps he would name how some of, of, some of us are religious about exercise or work or some about checking emails or others about sports. We might religiously keep a clean house, follow a certain diet, or limit our kids' screen time. Well, she imagines Paul reminding us that these things to which we devote 
so much time, energy, and even money are nothing compared to the God who made the world and everything in it. He would, reassure, uh, he would reassure us that God gives life and breath and all things, including love, which uh, without our needing to earn it. God longs to be in relationship with us, yearns for us to search for God and find him, though indeed he is not far from us. And when we reach out in our own craving to know the Lord of heaven and earth, we discover God is right here with us already continuously, devoted, religiously, end quote. Well, it's way too easy to make even good things our idols. Like the ancient peoples, we search for meaning, affirmation, or security. Idols are easy to grasp, literally and figuratively. On the other hand, We know God for what God has done, is doing, and will do. We know God through the life, death, and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. We know God through the waters of baptism and eating the bread and wine at the Holy Supper. We know God through the Holy Spirit, who is always near us and in all places. We are spirit-led and Jesus-fed. No philosophy, no pantheon of gods, no number of idols can fully teach us this. Only the love shown through the resurrected Jesus. Well, Paul compassionately pleads his case, not by bashing their religion and culture, not by condemning their idolatry, nor by boasting about the rightness of his position. Instead, Paul speaks to them, right where they are, complimenting their religiosity, using their own poets in his argument for his case. Well, the challenge for the Epicureans, the philosophers of the branch of philosophy, is that they believe that this life is it. And so they intend to pursue as much pleasure as they can. They were known for their disbelief uh, in religious traditions. The Stoics, on the other hand, focus on the unseen things, pretending to ignore the daily hardships and those living and those things that are wrong in our world. They sought to protect good order and civil religion. While Paul proclaims a resurrection, a resurrection of a certain one, Jesus, that stands against these two philosophical thoughts. Not only is there more to this life that can be seen, seeking pleasure isn't going to make you feel any less empty inside. Pretending or ignoring the sin and shortcomings of the world isn't going to make them go away. No, says Paul, let me tell you about a living God, not an idea, an image, or a statue. Let me tell you about the resurrection of the one called Jesus, that gives us hope. It is a hope beyond what we can see. It is a hope in a God who takes all things that bring us death in this world, addictions, bad relationships, loneliness, mental illness, greed, inappropriate allegiances, takes all those things and resurrects the life out of them. Well, the verses following our specified reading today tells us the spirit working through Paul changed some lives that day. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, we will hear you again about this. At that point, Paul left them, but some of them joined him and became believers, including Dionysius, the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. For the believers, knowing changes everything. Well, now that you know Jesus, how do you live and move and have your being in God? How is God's spirit breathing in and through you? Well, we live in today's Athens with different religious, political, and philosophical worldviews 
place where the dominant religion is none, but spirituality is high. We have good news about Jesus to share with the world that is seeking truth and meaning. At the same time, like Paul, it is not our place to condemn those who don't believe and convert. It's not all those who hear will believe. But we are called to further respectful conversations with those who are willing to engage with us. Because for us, knowing Jesus and the resurrection, nothing can be the same again. The whole world looks differently because of the resurrection. Anything is now possible. For God has altered the world's systems and assumptions. God is keeping his promises. God's reshaping communities and religious thoughts. God is on the move, and the church is trying to keep pace. And we, descendants of those original believers, give a name to the unknown God by showing our passion for the one whose life never ends, the mercy that has saved you, and the indescribable love that conquered death forever. Well, thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to sing our hymn of the day, Be Thou My Vision. Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Each prayer petition ends with, hear us, O God, and your response is, your mercy is great. God, our faithful companion, you promise to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering, and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all of your beloved creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to all who are oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Nurturing Lord, you sent your your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone, and to those who are sick or grieving. We especially lift up Ricky, Carol, Ken, Arlen, Barb, Gail, Harris, Brandy, Paul, Beckett, Baby Rosie, Larry, Natalie, Baby McCoy, Zane, Brian, Janice, David, Jerry, and Terry, at Fairway View Neighborhoods, Swede and Janet, Ruth, Jim, Vivian, and Eleanor, all our military who are deployed to areas of conflict, and those that we hold dear in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers, children estranged from their mothers, anyone grieving the death of a mother, and mothers who have lost a child. Support all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for the Apostle Matthias and all your saints. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. At this time, we ask the ushers to collect and present the offering as we sing, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in our kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O come and know Christ broken and poured out for you. And for those watching online, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite the communion assistants to come forward as we sing Lamb of God.
You stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you sent light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. So people of God, go in peace, serve the risen one. We will. Thanks be to God. You may be seated as we sing, Now thank we all our God. <laughs>